namaste and welcome and also uh, i discovered a few weeks ago that 21st of january which is today is uh, world religion day so then i was looking up uh, you know that is it whose satsang is it is it a weekend it was and i said whose satsang is it and it was mine <laughs> and i thought that's a nice topic even though of course we don't celebrate i don't know how old the custom goes but i thought it'll be a nice thing to talk about because it is so central to our lives and we may not perhaps sometimes be very inclined toward it i don't know how many of us would wake up every morning and say i'm a religionist or i want to understand you know it's like swami vivekananda such a well known saint of the past century he once said a quote which swami ji would often repeat he said what a blessing it is to be born in a religion but quite a tragedy to die in one and of course swami ji would make the point that religion is different from spirituality and i think that is a word many many millions of people today resonate with oh yes i am a spiritual seeker i am trying to find happiness so then i thought oh it ties to happiness because master said everybody in this world is looking for two things they are all looking for happiness and they are looking for freedom from pain and then when he went to the us in 1920 and the first lecture he gave was called the science of religion so then i said okay here is something we can tie into that if it is world religion day today maybe we can refresh our look outlook on life on our pursuit of happiness and then see how perhaps a spiritual quest or if we are a disciple if we have certain practices and i'm seeing that we are some of us over here from different religions and cultures how we are perhaps all moving in the same direction so also as you know we are uh, doing the readings on sundays now in this year from swami ji's book he wanted this to be the theme for sunday services called uh, rays of the same light uh, one light and here a uh, week 3 is is god present even where even there where there is ignorance i'll read it again is god present even there where there is ignorance truth is one and eternal realize oneness with it in your deathless self within the following commentary is based on the teachings of paramhansa yogananda the gospel of saint john chapter 1 makes a reference to the divine light that is obscure to the rational faculty but that enlightens our higher nature human nature the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not reason recoils from this statement with innumerable questions what is this darkness is it conscious that it should comprehend anything what sort of light would be capable of shining in darkness without transforming at least that part of the darkness in which it shines uh, the light does does this light shine only at night and if so why only then the solution is that to divine sight even daylight seems darkness the sun itself like the moon which shines only by reflected light from the sun is but a kind of reflection of the cosmic light which being immaterial is invisible to the eyes but which is the great source of all material reality in autobiography of a yogi paramhansa yogananda describes his youthful visit to ram gopal mazumdar the sleepless saint who lived in the vision of that hidden light around midnight yogananda wrote ram gopal fell into silence and i lay down on my blankets closing my eyes i saw flashes of lightning the vast space within me was a chamber of molten light i opened my eyes and observed the same dazzling radiance the room became a part of the infinite vault which i beheld with interior vision why don't you go to sleep sir how can i sleep in the presence of lightning blazing whether my eyes are shut or open you are blessed my son to have this experience 
The spiritual radiations are not easily seen. The saint added a few words of affection. This is the light that shineth in darkness. It has been described variously in the great scriptures. In the Bhagavad Gita, the 11th chapter, the devotee Arjuna is given an experience of the infinite state and exclaims in awe, if there should rise suddenly within the skies sunburst of a thousand suns flooding earth with beams undeemed of then might be that holy one's majesty and radiance dreamed of thus through holy scripture god has spoken to mankind And so it is, friends, we are, that was quite a perplexing reading when I, you know, went by line to line. But it uh, makes a very interesting point because you'll see by the end of the commentary I present, which is of course Swami Kran and the Jesus and Master's explanation, you will see that it is one of like one of those mysteries which we cannot help but pass through. It's, it's like asking the question, why did it have to be like that in the first place? Or sometimes like on the spiritual path, I remember a young disciple once said to me, I was so much happier before I came on the spiritual path. At least I didn't know that I have to be so well behaved. At least I didn't know like other college students that there is God, that he's watching us, that I have to always be forgiving and kind and loving and remembering of him. This is so difficult. And uh, in his commentary, actually, Swami Jesus, <laughs> he makes that comment. He says, you know, there is a truth behind the statement. Ignorance is bliss. <laughs> that we are seeking bliss and somebody may say, oh, yes, <laughs> I have the bliss. And it happens. You know, sometimes we come on the spiritual path. You see somebody and you know they are in trouble. And you say, oh, maybe I can help you. And they say, you know, especially if you have a uniform like mine, they say, well, thank you. I'm perfectly fine. I'm quite happy. And you say, well, you know, you don't look so happy. A master was once traveling by train and somebody was sitting with a frown and especially his frown was getting stronger, looking at master's robe and his long hair. And the person was, you know, just couldn't contain himself. <laughs> you might say he was very open. It was expressing on his face. And after a while, master looked at him. The journey was long. I think it was from New York to Los Angeles. And master said, sir, is there a problem you're facing? Are you okay? And the fellow said, I'm absolutely fine. And if I have a problem, it's none of your business. Master says, you see, I think it is my business because you and I are sharing the same compartment. And looking at you, I do see you're troubled by something. And the man said, you're strange. And uh, master said, look, if you're troubled by my gown and all, you know, I don't know what he said. He said, we can have a discussion. We can come to an understanding of each other. And we have so much time, why argue? Let's discuss. And as it happened, he was a Hollywood person, you know, actor. And uh, he was not a believer of God and Master. I don't know what conversation they had, uh, but Master had told him an agreement. He said, if I win, you will have to follow what I do. And if you win in the argument, in the discussion, I will do what you say. So I think Master had to throw that bait to get him in. And the person said, okay. And by the end of the long discussion, the person had to confess. He said, sir, I accept your uh, teachings. Actually, master had asked him this very question. He said, are you happy? And the fellow said, I'm not. He said, I'm healthy. I'm very wealthy, but I'm not happy. And then master later joked. He says, divine mother saved me from becoming a Hollywood actor. <laughs> I sometimes think, you know, how master could actually, you know, challenge that person that I'll take up what you say. But uh, we often go through life when you know we are having this question that why why could I not just stay in ignorance? Why am I having to always try to understand these things? But then Swami would say, what are our options? He says, we find ourselves. Even Gautam Buddha, as great as he was, he told his disciples. Sooner or later, I think we all ask this question, how did this start? And he said, why waste time? Much rather use your time to see how you can get out of it. Because actually what happened is, you know, because we're all seeking happiness and if master, if that was the basis of his first talk in America, and I assume the future ones, he said, if we are all seeking happiness, how many, especially towards the end of their life, can say, I found it. 
look at me i am happy how many can say that and that was quite a propelling you know actually force for me because i was approaching it from another angle my question was why do people die and you know what happens when they die but this was quite a statement that of course you have to accept death has to come as a doctor maybe i had this struggle that no maybe death should not come there are people you know who promise uh, anyway deathlessness immortal health and what not but when we are thinking of happiness master said it depends on a few you know you might say attitudes or uh, it's based on actually our reactions sometimes some things happen to us and we say ah that was good but then you know again he's making the point over here that if you live in the senses if you are too much way out there it will not it will you will touch it but you cannot put a finger on it swami kirananda ji was once you know driving in a car and maybe a story and uh, somebody's life can you know exemplify us uh, more about these things than philosophy and they were driving for skiing and you would say yes skiing is you know very joy giving and as they were going to the point from where they had to take a bus swami uh, their car skid and the car skid skid and it went and hit into a bus and there was nothing you could do it was damaged and at that point everybody thought oh here goes our trip and you know uh, they looked at swami that maybe you know now let's see what will happen and swami said well we can't drive this car further but we can get on to that bus and he said let's let's see where that bus is going and the bus was going where they had to say they all boarded and uh, happily they found seats and uh, you know swami was sitting happily and they were talking about their trip till one lady who was observing all of this she looked at him and she said sir aren't you the same person who was driving that car and which met with an accident and swami said oh yes ma'am she said you look mighty happy uh, why <laughs> your car just had an accident and swami says is she in a week's time my car will get fixed i will forget that this accident happened and i'll be happy but why should i waste this week <laughs> being unhappy or waiting for my car to get fixed now many people would say that is perhaps impractical you should get unhappy <laughs> when something like that happens you know we are so accustomed to this up and down the happiness and sadness of things despair of things that for a moment if we were to say that no you have to always be happy maybe the mind would even say but what about the flavors that come through unhappiness you know what about uh, unhappiness is also very you know sometimes we are in a bad mood and if somebody is trying to say well come let me take you out for a uh, some movie or a walk and you say no let me be and if you study in that moment we are quite happy in our unhappiness there's a magnetism over there and swami when he was saying that what is this darkness that does not comprehend the light he says this darkness is it conscious is the light conscious yes everything is consciousness on one level we might say darkness is the absence of light swami says what we are talking when we are talking of light when he's talking of that cosmic vision that was given to arjuna swami says what he is talking about is consciousness but an a spectrum of this wide consciousness which you and i face let's call it our feelings our mood our understanding our clarity of mind he says in that spectrum darkness is that end of the spectrum which just does not understand that it can be happy all the time on the other hand again another example of swami ji's life he starts a community meditation retreat jaya ji i am sure must have helped you partly with this project they constructed a temple huge temple for daily meditations what a noble step action one morning only to hear the crackling of the temple in fire came down into ashes quite a sad thing you would say it's a bad omen our temple you know got burnt but i think some of these great saints they take on these heavy karmas so we can derive hope in future master the same thing he built this beautiful temple for divine mother and the masters in ensenitas and he said i tell you i think this temple is slipping and people said no sir it's under foundation it has a good foundation he said really he said maybe it's slipping and sure enough one night they all heard a crash and master's temple went down in the ocean well swami's went down went up in fire but life doesn't stop 
he needed some groceries so on off he went to the shop nearby and he was picking things and he was whistling and the lady looked at him <laughs> and she said swami ji didn't you lose your temple yesterday in the fire <laughs> he said oh yes i did she said but you look at you you're whistling how is it that you're so happy and swami said well ma'am i lost my temple not my voice <laughs> which is again if you think of the spectrum he was at a point now of course i'll tell some more stories of how he grew lest we think oh he was special and there must have been a special grace maybe it was all donated money he wasn't attached to it one way or the other no friends it's not like that it is a mark of non attachment as hard as it seems non attachment is the way we can get happiness because the happiness we initially start looking for master says it comes in many many forms and that's why i was saying that if we are serious about finding happiness we should put our minds to it pleasure master says that's where it begins you know you say ah oh, i like watching movies well watch too many you know you 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 you're out of energy food i love these sweets well good have some more yes some more you know where this is going <laughs> it stops being master says the trouble with pleasure is it brings happiness he didn't deny that he says but it goes often as soon as it had come it brings us to a high point and then we lose it we are just left with anticipation for more perhaps a memory he says better than that and it is often an extreme involvement of the senses then master says when that happens a few times people say i don't want to eat too many sweets and you find joy in what he called contentment you know, you're content with in moderation some simple things like enjoying perhaps somebody's company enjoying as you may have seen you know the sun or of scenery you're not too your senses are engaged but it's not too much out there and he says from pleasure we move into the realm of general happiness and you say i'm happy i'm having some time by myself with my good friend and i'm i'm quite happy i can say i'm happy he says the duration of that happiness is actually longer he says if you take it a step further and you look in simple ways at the simplicity of life at your own perhaps uncluttered life you might say he says you start moving into a realm where you're happy for quite a bit of time he says and that you can define as joy um again uh, think of maybe reading a good book contemplating meditation you know people say oh i'm feeling so joyful i'm feeling calm i'm not out there i'm more i'm feeling happiness and joy inside of me but then master would say that even joy he said can have an opposite of sorrow pleasure actually has the opposite of pain whether it is a mental pain or physical pain of body and happiness is sadness joy is sorrow and master says when you finally move in the direction of saying that how is it that even this is not bringing me happiness and joy is actually quite good if you think of people who think of others who are serviceful who do not actually think of themselves many of these people often are in the realm of joy saint francis you know he was going through these ups and downs of happiness you know helping other people treating his friends to food partying you might say creating so much rajas but then they said that he was not really happy he was actually often first he would lead these parties then his friends had to look for him and he was to be found they say lagging behind and they would say are you okay come come let's go to his house let's have some fun let's and he would say yeah 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 i need that but after that they said he was not so happy till one day he was sitting grumpy in a very bad mood in his shop and came this lady to buy some clothes with her mother and at that time a beggar came and the beggar said sir please help me i have no you know money no things it's winter and saint francis thinking that he he his father ran the best shop in assisi for clothes thinking that this is going to tarnish his image he said shoot get away get away and seeing his bad behavior the lady got up and she said how despicable and she opened her wallet and gave this man some money and he thanked her and in that moment they say that francis came to know of a joy which he had never known 
and he looked at that lady now this is i like this part of the story because see people of great energy they they can't contain themselves he looked at her he opened the chest of money he took all the money over there and he ran and found the beggar he gave it to him and then he thanked her he says thank you for teaching me the joy of generosity they became friends he started helping people more with clothing with medicines till again one day he reached a point and he was not happy and he was crying actually he left his friends who were helping the lepers and he went by a river and he was sobbing and he asked he had read the bible somewhat and he prayed he knew perhaps this time intuitively he knew his answer has to come from not a person but perhaps from god he said why am i not happy why am i so unhappy everybody says i have so many reasons to be happy i have money i have friends i am famous i sing i dance i help and then he heard the voice of christ he said oh francis how could you ever be happy without me and that is a rare kind of happiness it's not the kind of statement people hear every day it's not the kind of statement we hear when we are let's say see because remember one more thing it's nothing was wrong with those things because it's part of god's creation except that they are limitation in themselves pleasure happiness joy i am serving you as long as the i remains christ was teaching him happiness cannot come when master had to go to america as we all know some of us were many of us were disciples uh, his mission was to reestablish the original teachings of sanatan dharma of you might say the eternal religion uh, and of christianity and yogananda ji i often think how did he choose that topic the science of religion by the way we i'll suggest three books at the end and uh, uh, because one of the books is god is for everyone swami ji rewrote that first lecture of master in that form and master was making the point that we are looking for happiness we have energy we have entered this age of energy but we must avoid those traps and go straight for the goal because happiness true happiness is really inside where is god what do the religions teach we fight so much i was just looking up on google the religions of the world and a list comes then i clicked on one and sects come and i clicked on them and more sects came and i said the trouble with many of us i think also go through this understanding i was once in a car with my relatives newly i had joined the ashram and they said of all things you were serving fine you as a doctor and of all things joining the religious path the spiritual path knowing very well that religion is at the root of all of trouble man's trouble look at the world what has religion give us given people except confusion and war how could you in your sane mind and you look all right this is so confusing you look fine but how did you choose this <laughs> i said we have to we can't argue over here we have to discuss i said religion is not at fault without religion like we learned from saint francis without god religion was created for us to know god without him true happiness is not possible eternal happiness is not possible if we don't understand him certainly we start you know going from one religion my religion is better than yours um, so many sects and then i was thinking why were there so many sects i was studying hinduism christianity buddhism and jainism uh, to name a few and i looked in some of the smaller sects and actually they had a very valid reason <laughs> you know their founder was not in agreement with what the previous founder had done and they said this is oppressing us and we want to go in this direction so everybody was quite well meaning but again like i said that was kali yuga dark ages now fortunately we are moving up and master made a very interesting statement he says the future of religion the future the religion of future will be self realization when people will finally come to realize that the kingdom of god god himself happiness this joy is inside of me where is it essentially chiefly in the heart but master says when you calm the heart you realize that uh, it is uh, you are actually not so much a body 
or anything else you are a soul which is encased as we know those teachings so in master's teachings it was not just that he presented us with these uh, philosophies he gave us practices energization exercises he says to slowly disconnect to develop the body in such a way that you're not depending on food on external matters you're withdrawing you're learning pranayam through those you're withdrawing your energy from the senses and then he would say finally when we can control and this is the science that we teach in kriya yoga that when you can control the ups and downs oh i am so happy oh but i am not happy he says when you can learn to control those you will realize that your response which is in the heart is what needs to be controlled watched and he said when you can watch that you can bring it to this point of course needless to say saint francis needed christ all of us all truth seekers they need the blessings of a guru some self correction we can do but as we move on this path this is something true scriptures declare on this world religion day maybe we can also go home and make the study why am i on the religious path and i hope i don't end in disaster of talking about my religion but not understanding the essence of it and as we move there then we can see the parallels between the lives of saint francis swami kridananda ji the saints master and our own lives that they too started like this swami ji when he was a young monk i'll end with this story he once entered a mood mood master actually said come from past experiences and past lives so swami ji was in a mood and he had a beautiful meeting with master master actually told him in the very first meeting he said i am seeing you because divine mother told me to you have good karma i accept you and swami ji was very happy but few days later he realized master was not giving him that kind of personal attention anymore so he, this thought came to him one morning he doesn't love me i am not good enough nobody loves me everybody is busy doing what they are doing and then you know he said wait a minute i'm not happy thinking these thoughts and he had the wisdom to say maybe these are not even true and then he met master he meditated he came out of that mood through meditation he says for 5 minutes he focused at this point and he saw he was wrong and then when master met him in the daytime master says walter actually i have to tie two stories which are not exactly the same but master saw him once when he was in a mood and master says how are you walter and swami says well sir and master tapped him over here he said very good very good and swami would say that he didn't allow him to finish that why he was not well because not well being unwell is a delusion so master was trying to say be happy the second time master met him he simply said he said how will you help others if you have moods no more moods walter otherwise how will you help people so let's people we can help people to the degree we have helped ourselves in our quest for happiness in our quest for moving into that lightness that swami says darkness cannot comprehend it the darkness is inside of us sometimes it doesn't make sense some ways to improve it is yes meditation chanting devotion i was somebody was asking me this morning how do you help yourself on the spiritual path i said years ago i fortunately had this much wisdom I planted myself right in the heart of things <laughs> in you might say in the midst of activity I said whether it was buying groceries whether it was driving people here and there whether it was meditation whatever it was I said I realized that if I just stayed in that environment which was to say the ashram spending more and more time in the company of others I said I knew that in order to last for the longest duration to be happy to taste it in different ways and flavors the safest ways to be in the midst of that so we need an inner environment but friends the kind of happiness which is being promised to us uh, is uh, master said eternal he says god has every right he doesn't put us through these but our karma does our free will does he says no amount of suffering can even begin to compare with what is in store for us when we do find him he says eternal i often think of that eternal think of a happiness which starts and without repeating itself never ends master says a tiny bubble of laughter he ends his poem samadhi a tiny bubble of laughter i am become the sea of mirth itself mirth is uncontrollable laughter 
First I thought my stomach would ache if I had that kind of laughter. But then I quickly realized stomach has nothing to do with bliss. <laughs> bliss is beyond the body. Actually true bliss is experienced out of the body. That's why uh, so much is made of it. So anyway, that is what I wanted to share about happiness. As Swami progressed, as the saints, as the great ones have progressed by helping each other, praying for each other, serving the great ones, serving other people, we too can move in that direction. And I hope this coming year uh, brings us that kind of happiness. Joy to you.